Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a direct live calibrator. In this video, I'm really kind of starting the review for the products you can see before me, which were delivered a couple of days ago from the by the audio consultants, uh, specialist hi-fi dealer based in Reading, obviously in, in England. And I'm kind of going to have to review kind of components together purely just because of time constraints. It's the 22nd of December. So it's, you know, it's only a couple of days before Christmas. I've got the system for three weeks, but within that three weeks, I've got to look at speakers, I've got to look at accessories, I've got an amplifier, I've got other amplifiers to do. So it's really tight on time, but I want to give each individual product as much time on air, if that makes sense as possible, as much focus as I can. But it's just not time to swap bits in and out, keep swapping around and do listening and do recordings and do reviews and do the website and stuff. And to be honest, I've really probably got to put out an apology. I mean, you might see, probably be seeing this in January, but around this sort of time, you'll probably be thinking, God, the videos have slowed up a little bit from Pursuit of Perfect System. You know, what's Terry doing? Well, Terry's been sitting in that chair listening to this system. I just cannot get enough of it. It is absolutely astonishingly good. Astonishingly good. It blew me away. Kind of. So let's, let's just start from the beginning. I don't want to get myself overexcited, as we all know I do. So the guys, the audio consultants, brought the system here. They spent most of the day with me, but only really about four or five hours, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's probably three hours of chat, maybe four hours of chat, and setting up a little bit of listening, a little bit of A-B demonstrations, and they kind of left me with a full system. So it was the German Physics Unlimited 2 speakers here. You've got the Audio Analog Maestro Integrated Amplifier, this really big amp down here. They left me with a lot of gut wire cabling, which is actually not in the system now, and I'll explain why in a minute. And they left me with some HRS products. We've got a HRS platform underneath the amplifier. There's also HRS feet underneath and a HRS kind of top plates here. Now they've all got specialist names. I'll put the specialist names up in writing because there's just so much here to try and remember the names of. I'm sorry, I just can't. And I'm, I'm trying to get the video content made. Um, so please bear with me. And I apologize to the audio consultants. When it comes to review time, I'll be a bit more specific. But I just want to get the videos made because really this is all about the audio. This is not so much about me talking. But I just want to explain what I've done. So the guys brought the system here, left it here. I listened to it for a bit, was enjoying it. I heard masses of potential in what the system could do. But knowing this room as I do, I know this from inside and out. You know, I've, I've done all type, different types of measurements. I know the acoustics. I know the bass problems that I get in this room. So... I listened to the system via a CD player that the guys have brought with them, the Norma CD player, the Norma Revo Digital Source, which you can still see over there. That's not plugged in at the moment. And I, enjoy, I really enjoyed it. I could straight away hear the benefits of the German Physics DDD driver, this omnidirectional single point source radiating driver that works in three different ways, uh, from 25 kilohertz down to 200 hertz. So it's basically doing really kind of upper bass from upper bass because obviously the crossover will go down from 200 hertz so it's doing upper bass and it's doing all vocal and it's doing all tr treble all at the same time all in an omnidirectional fashion completely coherently completely coherently probably the most coherent mid-range treble soundstage presentation one of the most that i've heard obviously it's up there with kind of well, I've heard Kef Blades do it. I've heard other really expensive speakers kind of pr present an image, present a, a three-dimensional stereo image. And that is what these speakers are designed to do, and they do it. What was interesting, once obviously uh, kind of dust had settled, and I was like, right, let's go back to basics for me and what I would normally do with a system. So straight away, I sw swap the source, swap the source over to our dedicated music PC, which is really interesting, run Dirac Live. And looking at the measurements from Dirac Live, there were some really great bits about the speakers being here, and there were some big problems about the speakers being in this part of the room, namely in the bass. We've got a big suck out at the listening position with the bass. But what I've decided to do, really I probably should move the speakers to get a better bass performance. Now I could do that by moving the speakers. I've just been enjoying listening. It's like, ah, oh, you know, we could go through the whole process again, start again, spend a day moving the speakers around, finding the right position, do all the measurements again, do a whole other load of new listening, make sure I'm happy. I, I, just, I honestly I just haven't got the time. So and we're, they're standing phenomenal where they are. It's just like, you know, the, the perfectionist in me wants to do it. The kind of 
realist in me realizes that I should probably just leave them where they are and enjoy them and crack on with other reviews and just be mindful of the fact that part of the base is going to be leaner from the speakers and I've just got to be mindful of the just got to be mindful of the impact of having the speakers here in the room which I'll talk about all through the review process so that's where we are what was interesting the the, the, the regiments again for Dirac live from a frequency response point of view for mid-range and trebles pretty good from the German physics pretty smooth and pretty even what was more impressive from the German physics speakers was the speakers after Dirac anyway their impulse response right then so moving on the audio analog maestro amplifier which is kind of I think it's an anniversary edition ad amplifier I think designed partially by a company I think it's AirTech or something like that I, again I'll learn all this I apologize so that is a really interesting amplifier because it's a big amplifier reminiscent of the the Krell amplifiers back in the day and it's for me I love it because it's an amplifier which which says right we put our hi-fi system first because I think they're envisioning you know, big speakers or big hi-fi speakers, and then your amplifier in the middle, kind of what people used to do years ago. Now a lot of people kind of have small little dinky units, don't they, on the little dinky thing out of the way. Whereas I think, you know, Audio Analog have said, right, this is an expensive amplifier. This is a great amplifier. You want to put this pride of place and show it off. You know, I'm all, I'm all for that approach. You know, I, I don't blame anybody for trying to live with hi-fi in a domestic to make it domestically friendly I've, I've got no issue with that but for me I'm, I'm totally on board with the I'm proud of this let's get this on display which which you need to have for an amplifier of this size and kind of the sexy you know artwork fins and the beautiful metalwork and stuff so I love the look of the amplifier obviously it's sitting on top of, the, of a HRS platform which is interesting I can't take it on and off to try that out. it's just too bloody heavy but I've messed around with the HRS blocks on top tried two of them i've tried them in all different ways it's definitely best just straight down the middle really interesting one that is but the sound this is this is a big amplifier i think it's 150 watts a class a b amplifier you can just tell it's a powerful amplifier but it's not a powerful amplifier in a sense it's imposing itself on the sound it's just got like a really great amount of control in terms of volume up and up and up and up and you don't ever seem to get that ceiling point where oh one clicks too loud turn it back down which is Normally a sign of a great product, a sign where they've over-engineered the product, so nothing's really stressing itself, which is great for sound quality terms. It's got to be great for longevity terms. If you're not throttling the life out of something, surely it's got to last you much longer than if you are. Uh, maybe it doesn't, but that's just my kind of way of looking at it. So really, really impressed with the sound of the amplifier. It does sound like a solid state amplifier, just come off a tube one. It doesn't have the tube euphonicness, but it is a very sweet sounding product, very fast, very transparent. It's got a lovely amount of detail, and it's just, it's kind of, in a sense, it's a transparent product. You just listen to the music, you don't ever really pay attention to it, other than the fact you're keeping an eye on those white LEDs at the front. Other than that, it doesn't grab your attention in the slightest, which, in a way, it seems like an odd way to praise something, but. It, you know, to me, that's the highest praise. If it's not an amplifier that's not getting your attention or not grabbing your attention for any reason, really, it's doing its job fantastically well. So then from there, obviously, I've gone back to using the Telerium Q cables in the system because they are the cables I use all the time. So I'm just very, very familiar with the impact on those cables. I'm also really familiar with just how transparent they are. They are a really transparent range of cables. And I really like the fact that with those cables, you get everything. You get... From this system you get depth you get subtlety but with the subtlety you also get big kind of impressive pieces within the music as well that's something that i really like about the cables that's something i really like about this system and that's something that i'm going to demonstrate to you in this song so before we move on i don't know if you can see behind me we're back to using the digital front end as i mentioned so we're using our music server our audio pc with products in it like the jpay femto all jcat hardware dirac live obviously runs the software through into the Chord Electronics Hugo M Scaler via a JCAT USB isolator. From there, we're using Wave High Fidelity Stream BNC digital cables to dual, uh, dual run to link to, you probably can't even see it, the Chord Electronics Qtist. So the Qtist is getting a full feed, a 705.4, I think it is, upsampled feed from the Hugo M Scaler, the Chord Electronics Hugo M Scaler. So the, the Qtis is sounding as good as it can possibly sound. And I'm actually going to call that now beast mode. So we're using the Chord Electronics Qtis in beast mode. And this big beastly thing on top of it is another one of these, a HRS. Again, I'm not sure the exact name, but kind of like an isolation, uh, vibration absorbing 
unit that was actually on top of the CD player. And I thought, well, I'll just have a little mess around with these HRS products because we did an AB demonstration. Straight away, I could tell that they could work. And they seemed to work in a different way to the normal isolation products that are normally used, the uh, Seradisks, the plinth design Seradisks. So I thought, well, let's have a mess around and a play around. So I've got the big one off the CD player. And I plonked it on top of the cutest. And it's like, oh, wow, interesting. This is interesting. So I had a little mess around with different things. And then I started grabbing the, the HRS feet that were under the CD player and I started plonking, dotting them around. So we've got two on top of the Hugo M scaler, one on top of a linear power supply and one down there on top of a main conditioner. To me, the two here are probably the crucial ones and this big boy up on top of the core cutest. So I've had a mess around with the HRS products. They're fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. Really, really interesting. And I want to spend more time with them, do more testing with them because I think, you know, I know isolation is a very, very powerful tool. And it could well be that a balance between certain different types of products, which kind of bring different things to the table, will be a fantastic combination for me and, and a re review system going forward. So I'm really, really interested to try those more going forward. And what I've also done, I've added some NCF, Furitech NCF products to the, to the system. There's now boosters dotted around the system. And for me, that's just helped to get the noise floor down that just a little bit more, just to give us more space, more soundstage, more clarity. So, a lot, a lot, a lot of chat because there's so much new in here. There's so much stuff to talk about. It's, you know, I'm literally only scratching the surface. Right, let's put a track on so you can hear what I'm going on about. This is a, a test track that I found the other day. I think it's come off a Dali CD, Dali uh, demo CD. Uh, have a listen. I'm hoping the depth that I'm getting in this system comes out because really we're not actually recording depth. Depth is a psychoacoustic experience. The sound is coming from just this point here, and yet we perceive it as coming from beyond the speakers or outside the speakers. The outside the speakers, or, or between the speakers, I get, because it's a phantom image created by the two. How we get sound outside of speakers from a phantom image point of view, I do not know. And how we get sound depth from a hi-fi system, I really do not know how it works, how it's created. So imagine trying to record that. If I was recording, if I had a microphone here and I was recording someone banging a drum 20 foot away, I'm recording at a distance. But I'm actually recording just these speakers. So it would be interesting to see what kind of depth comes out. Have a listen. I'll come back in a second.
interesting, interesting one, isn't it? What's so great about that track? It's probably another one I'm going to play now. You go. It always does that. What's so great? What's so great about that track is the variation in there. I think the tone and the timbre of the instruments and stuff is is really interesting. No one really knows what instruments they are, how they're supposed to sound and stuff. But you get a very great impression, funny enough, of the size of the instruments, the type of instruments, kind of the big heavy trombone, the very delicate, subtle piano at the back, the massive, great big, oh, I assume that's a trumpet or something that comes in over here with real raspiness. Now, that's something I was using. I only just started using this test track recently. And that's the bit I was messing around with. Like, right, I want that raspiness, I want all these instruments to be separated, separated out across the sound stage with no blurring and no merging. Now, bearing in mind, I'm only using the Chord Electronics Cutest DAC. If I had the Dave in here, I think that would just be, it would have just done it itself. But we're using the Cutest, which is not wonderful, and it's a Chord DAC, really. It's, it, the Cutest in Beast mode is, pff, Cutest is good on its own. The Cutest in Beast mode is it, off the Hugo M scale. I, like, I can't believe how good it is with this system and the speakers for doing things like imaging and depth and stuff like that. Wow, what a thing, 1,200 quid. What a DAC, you already know I felt that, but it's like, right, back to where I was. Right, so what I wanted to make sure is that the system stayed, stayed musical, sweet sounding, detailed, but with clarity and space. But I didn't want to soften it too much because you were, I think there's a, and I've been there and I've done it, there's a, you have a danger of softening the music too much. Now, people say, oh, I've, I've used isolation products and it's subdued things down. I don't think that's the case, not at all. But you definitely can use isolation products, maybe in the right and the wrong way or the right types of ones to achieve a certain result. So to get the sound out, to get that sound, it's taken a slightly different approach. Because these speakers work, because these speakers sound different to what I'm used to, because they're different, because they're out in a room and we're getting more depth, my now focus has changed. So normally when the speakers are back where they are, they don't get that much depth from the system. That's just how it is. But you get a lot of other things. So again, I'm always focusing on space, clarity, instruments and things being all separated out, like as if I was looking at individual musicians across a sound stage that's kind of been a focus with clarity and focus but when there's depth to the system your focus changes ever so slightly because you're thinking well I, I want to try and get more depth but i don't want to soften the sound so when that big trumpet comes in that's that's a transient that's a transient peak that's uh, you know a musician really giving it some with their instrument. The last thing you want to do is soften that down. And one of the things that Rob Watts talks about with the Hugo M Scaler technology is that across an audio system, what the Hugo M Scaler allows is you to have that massive, great big transient peak without losing the the rest of the sound. So that if as you, if you listen back, if you listen to that monitor that track again, I mean start the music again and have another listen. You've got that big raspy trumpet that comes in, and yet we've still got a trombone, boom, 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 just playing the beat, boom, 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 with a big raspy trumpet dominating your ear and dominating what you're listening to. And that is what a transient does. And that is what the one million tap length filters with what WTA, Rob Watts technology is all about. And that demonstrates it perfectly. The big boom, 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 trombone. And the big, wow, the big transient peaks coming in, the consistent transient peaks. Now the speakers have got to deliver that and the amplifier's got to be able to deliver that control across both channels They've got to be massively coherent, the speakers, in order to deliver that as well. And they're delivering it in a 3D manner. Right? So you're sitting in the listening position and you're listening to, for me anyway, as close as I've ever had, the real musicians playing instruments. And it, I've listened to that song about 50 times in the last two days. It's like, I can't get over how good that sounds. I cannot get over how good that sounds. Now, we're using these expensive speakers, £12,000 speakers. It's a £10,000 speaker and 2000 for the finish. So, really, it's a £10,000 speaker. That's expensive. £7,000 amplifier, £1,200 DAC. £1,200 DAC. That is how good chord DACs are. I didn't know it. I had no idea. I knew they was good, but I didn't realise... It was that good. So if you imagine if I had a Dave in there now, oh my God, I can't even imagine it. But the reason that's sounding so good is because of the Core Electronics Hugo M Scaler. And now I'm starting to hear just how good my audio PC is and just how good things like JP Femto are. Now I knew that was great. You just realize there's loads of sonic potential locked away in different parts of the system. And to hear MQ cables, wow, 
I really, really like those cables. They're phenomenal. If I know if I had the statements in here now, oh God. Again, right back to the start. Thank you very much to the audio consultants for loaning me this kit. You know, I've kind of what I call Terry Ellis it, put all my stamp on the sound. And that's why I love it, because this is this is creating my sound, and I'm trying obviously trying to get that across in the recordings, but oh god, it's damn impressive. Damn, damn, damn impressive. I don't care who you are, it's damn impressive. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry, it's a, it's a rambly long one. I'm just trying to get across the experience I've had in the last couple of days, because it's uh, it's been humbling, it's been you know, hugely interesting and ins inspiring for me. I've learned so much about how a hi-fi system, not, not how it can present it, because I've heard it loads, but how it can be presented in this room, what I like about that aspect of it, what bits maybe I could do with and without, what bits more do I want, what bits can I live without, you know, it's it's, it's very difficult to get perfect sound because we, we live in it, you know, we're listening in an imperfect environment, but that's why I love, that's why I love hi-fi and why I love audio systems, that's why I'm so passionate about it, it's because it just surprises me time after time after time, it's like, just when you think you've heard the best of what you can deliver, you hear something else and you think, oh God, it just gets, it just keeps getting better and better and better. And the law of diminishing returns, the law of diminishing returns does not exist. I can assure you, you just need to listen more, get out more, hear different types of systems and set up really well. People know what they're doing. And, oh God, it's an amazing hobby. What a great hobby. Right. And it's the 22nd of December. You're probably going to see this mid-jan or whatever because I'm filming way ahead of the videos. I just can't make it enough. I can't be listening making videos, writing reviews, doing website work, working as well. So Merry Christmas, belated, and I'll see you all soon. Leave us a thumbs up, subscribe, and all that jazz. See you soon. Take care. Thank you.